In this video, I'm going to restore this Dixie mid-century modern chest of drawers back to wood and add a wooden base to the bottom. This piece had been posted on Facebook Marketplace for several months before I decided to pick it up. It's painted in white and black latex paint. We're going to begin by removing the hardware and safely storing it in a container so the pieces don't get lost. The original hardware is definitely unique. Upon removing the drawers, there is paint on the sides and insides of the drawers that will need to be removed. Before I choose how I want to remove the paint, I'm going to use my carbide scraper to see what the substrate looks like on different parts of the dresser. This gives me a better idea of how many layers of paint and finish are underneath and what has been done to the dresser previously. Due to the numerous layers covering the wood substrate, I'm going to use Clean Strip Paint Stripper to remove the paint with a 2 inch chip brush. I always use the 15 minute paste formula because it doesn't dry out as quickly as the liquid formula. Before I apply stripper to the drawers, I'm going to cover the inside drawer holes with painter's tape. I won't remove this until I'm ready to reinstall the hardware at the end. I went through two rounds of stripper application before neutralizing the stripper with steel wool and mineral spirits. Any areas that still had quite a bit of paint and lacquer present, I used my carbide scraper to remove the rest while it was still softened from the paint stripper. I'm going to build a custom base for this dresser that fits the style of the top drawers better. To do that, I need to cut off the bottom half of the dresser, so I started by removing the support pieces and the legs. Once the other pieces were out of the way, I put down some painter's tape to help stop the veneer from splintering, and then I used my jigsaw to cut both sides off. Once the bottom was cut off, there were little pieces of paint that were in between the bottom and the side of the dresser that just started to peel out. I needed to get the rest of the lacquer and paint off the surface, so I used 120 grit sandpaper on my orbital sander. I tried the 3M Cubitron sanding discs, these are awesome, and I only needed two discs for the whole dresser. I'll link them below in the description if you're interested. After sanding and using paint stripper, there was still a considerable amount of paint and lacquer on the dresser. I used a chisel and my detailed carbide scraper, a utility knife, and folded sandpaper to remove as much of the paint as possible. Mahogany wood grain tends to have tiny gaps in the wood, which can easily be filled with finishes. The problem with a blonde lacquer on mahogany is that the white lacquer sinks into the gaps and creates discoloration in the finishes, even after you apply stain. 
One of the best things that I found to remove this is antique furniture refinisher with steel wool. Just follow the directions on the can, make sure you use it in a well ventilated area, and save your final sanding until after using it, as it will cause the wood grain to raise. In my quest to remove all of the paint, there had been broken trim details on the bottom of the drawer faces that had been painted over, and I really wanted to get all the paint out before re-gluing the piece, but I ended up breaking the entire piece off. To fix the piece, I just cut the trim break off so it was square, then I shaped a piece of poplar hobby board I had on hand to fit the curve of the existing trim. Once it was reattached, I used a chisel, a hand planer, and sandpaper to get the correct shape. There was also some damage on the drawer faces in the corners where the veneer had been chipped off. So I patched that damaged area using mahogany edge banding. I cut the damage out so that I could easily put a patch in. I used tape to make a stencil and then I ironed on the pre-glued edge banding in place. I then used mahogany wood filler to fill in any gaps. The top sides and all of the edges of the dresser did not have any mahogany veneer in place. I'm not sure if it was there in the original build, but I wanted to add it back on to make the piece look a bit more finished. To attach the pre-glued edge banding, I used painter's tape to hold it in place and I iron it on. I then use a chisel and sandpaper to trim and soften the edges that are overlapping. To make the base for this dresser, I'm not using any real formula. I looked at other mid-century modern dressers and decided how I wanted it to look. I laid out some poplar boards on the dresser and then marked an angle on the leg that I found appealing using a straight edge. I then clamped the leg to my miter saw and cut the angle based on the mark. I used that leg to mark the other leg pieces to cut. I then cut the height so the angle gave me enough room to connect the sides of the base. To figure out the length of the aprons, I used the cut legs and positioned them until they looked right without interfering with the other areas on the bottom. And then I measured between all four spaces to confirm the measurements on the left and right side and front and back were both the same. Once everything was cut, I set everything up to see how everything looked together and decided that I wanted the front board to have an arch. To achieve this look, I took the front board and I traced it onto paper. I then folded the paper in half and cut out half of an arch so that both sides would look the same. I traced that template onto the board and I used my jigsaw to cut out the board's shape. I then sanded the arch by hand to smooth everything out. To join the legs with the sides, I'm going to use wooden dowels. I marked the legs and the sides where I wanted the dowels to be joined together, and then I used my self-centering dowel jig to drill 5 16 inch holes into them. I then glued the dowels and the connecting pieces and clamped them together to dry overnight. I drilled two pocket holes on each side to attach the base to the carcass of the dresser. 
Before staining the dresser, I went over everything with 180 grit and then 220 grit sandpaper. I used pre-stain conditioner on the entire dresser, specifically on the poplar base, because it tends to be blotchy when you stain it. When using pre-stain conditioner, make sure you apply the stain within the directions recommended window of application on the label. I applied General Finish's brown mahogany gel stain to the entire dresser and base using a foam brush, and wiped the stain back using a cloth with the direction of the wood grain. After the stain had dried, I used General Finish's Armor Seal. I applied it using a non-abrasive pad, and then I wiped it back. The application is similar to applying stain. It takes a while to dry, but you only need a maximum of three coats, after which General Finish's notes that adding any more than three coats doesn't really add more protection. After the finish is fully dried, I come back with some high grit sandpaper, typically anything over 600 grit works. A paper bag will also work for this, but I sand off all the surfaces to get out any of those minor imperfections. And then I wipe off the dust using a tack cloth. I use Howard's Feed and Wax on the surfaces and the drawer slides on the drawers and inside the dresser. This allows the drawers to slide in and out smoothly. I picked up some 3 4 inch number 10 machine screws from Ace Hardware to replace the mismatched screws that were there before, and reinstalled the hardware, which I kept original and simply polished up. I then used pocket hole screws to attach the base to the dresser, I purchased a box of pocket hole screws off of Amazon that has been really useful, and I'll link it below in the description. Wow, you made it all the way here. We covered a lot, but let's look at what we started with. And here's where we ended up. Make sure you click the like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. And uh, stick around until the end. I included a bonus clip. Scraping. I'm working harder, not smarter.